Um, so, hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming to my talk on uh, using Git Worktree to supercharge your uh, development experience. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to uh, quickly pivot into uh, new work without losing your current work. Uh, to start, I'll give you a little bit of information about myself, if I can figure out how to use a computer, apparently. A uh, <laughs> little bit about myself. My name is uh, Corey Knox. I am a, a software developer for Chocolatey Software. Uh, prior to Chocolatey, uh, I spent 10 years doing end-user computing support uh, for a large tire retailer up here in Canada. So uh, with helping with the administration and troubleshooting of uh, the computers that the end users uh, use from operating system deployment through to uh, software deployment. My interests are in uh, programming in general, mostly PowerShell, C Sharp, and whatever language happens to be required to fix uh, issues in open source projects. I have a keen knack of a of um of finding weird edge cases in in things and so i will uh, find those edge cases report the issues and then often i'll fix them in a language that i never heard of until uh until that project so um so to start off i'll give a brief overview of uh what git is uh, this is more of an intermediate uh, talk about Git because we're talking about Git work trees, but just to level set about uh, what Git is. Uh, it's a version control system. In particular, it's a distributed version control system. And that means back in the day, we had a central server that you would check out files from, make changes and check them back to. And uh, you had one source of truth. Now you have it being distributed. You end up with a copy on your uh, computer and every other developer's computer uh, to work from, and you don't have the you don't have to rely on the network nearly as much. Uh, Git is a form of a blockchain. Uh, it's not just for a buzzword bingo, but uh, it is. Each commit on the on Git is uh, cryptographically unique and is a combination of the file name and the file contents and uh, the commit message and all that. And which is why, if you rebase and make changes, uh, your whole history will change because any any change to an early uh, block will change all the ones in the future. Uh, Git is. Contrary to popular belief, it is not GitHub, it's not GitLab, and it's not Bitbucket. These are merely uh, services that we use to uh, store, I ironically store our distributed version control system in a central spot. And, uh, but most importantly for Git, it's a way for us to track our changes uh, to our files over time and with messages about hopefully about why changes were made and they're not just uh commit one commit two commit seven but actually why we change a file so now we've gone over a bit of what git is uh, let's talk about what is a work tree now work tree is effectively a branch and a branch in git is you'll have your your main uh, your main method of your main branch of working. Uh, it's usually called main or master, or uh, developer stable or what have you, depending on what how you have it configured. And then if you want to work on a feature, you'll create a new branch, and Git will track everything in that branch, and then at the end you will. Uh, merge it in and effectively that is all that uh work tree is 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 that branch and so that's the end thanks for coming to my talk
Um, but in, in actuality, in all seriousness, um, <laughs> that that's the very basics of what Git work tree is, but it goes much deeper than just being a tree or a branch on the tree. It is a, a completely separate directory for you to work out of. For instance, if you have a, uh, a test suite that you need to run and that test suite takes several hours and while that's running, you want to go and do other work. The way that I used to do it is I would, while it's working, I would open up a new terminal. I'd go to a new directory and I'd do a git clone and clone down my repository all over again. And then I'd work out of this new directory. And then I'd run into the scenario of, I have two or three repositories on my computer. They're all at different states of uh, being in sync with the, with the upstream service, whether it's GitHub or GitLab. And I was just, a, it was a nightmare to, to work with. Um, now, the, the other scenarios I run into is I'd be working on something and I'd have a feature half implemented. And someone would come to me and say, we have this severe bug, we need to fix, fix this bug before we can do anything else. And the way I would normally get around that is I would stash my incomplete work with the git stash command, or I would uh, commit that work and give it a uh, very descriptive commit message that says, this is temporary, rebase this out before merging. And absolutely never did we merge in a commit that said rebase this out before merging. Um, that was not me, that was someone that looks like me. Um, so Worktree allows us to not have to stash or commit those. But also the other uh, issue that you run into is with untracked files. And so you're adding a new, new command in, you've got the, your PowerShell file up and you've typed it all in, but you're not quite ready to commit and you need to pivot and start working on this other thing. Instead of keeping that file as untracked or uh, committing it and then potentially having to just remove it later because you decide that it's a, it needs to be a different name or something, you can use uh, Git work tree. And so basically there are uh, five main uh, commands that I use for Git work tree. Uh, although I'm, <laughs> I'm finding more all the time, just before uh, starting the session, I learned of a few more uh, work tree commands that I might be uh, bringing into my workflow, but the main ones to, to get you started, uh, there's, there's kind of Git work tree and then there's uh, Git branch and Git work tree has the add and you give it a path to what your new work tree is. And so that will uh, create that work tree for you. The next one is uh, get work tree list and that will list all the work trees that you currently have so that you can kind of track what you have on the go. And then you have, you have these work trees, you're gonna wanna remove them. So we have git work tree remove where you give it the path uh, to the old work tree. And then, as I mentioned, there was a, the git branch command. Uh, I use the git branch dash VV. I'm pretty sure the VV stands for very verbose and uh, it differs slightly from the dash V in that uh, this gives you more information about your remotes. I think it gives you some pretty uh, coloring as well as it tells you the uh, the work tree if if your branch has a work tree. And finally, if you've done any cleanup outside of uh, outside of Git of like cleaning up your work trees, uh, you can use Git work tree prune, which will clean up the references to them. Uh, Git work tree prune will itself run automatically at whatever interval Git happens uh, to set for it, but if you want to do it faster, you can um, you can just run the prune command. 
And now, uh, as, as Fred would say, um, this is PowerShell and not PowerPoint. So we're gonna uh, go into kind of a demo of how to use uh, Git Worktree. So um, I have, I didn't set this all up like I had planned, but I have the uh, chocolatey repository checked out into this, uh, the, this um, folder and I'm on the develop branch. And so if I do a get work tree list, I can see that I currently only have one work tree. This is kind of a, like a fresh, uh, just, just recently been cloned down. And if I were to, in this directory, uh, run vagrant provision, this is gonna run through the chocolatey, the tests on the chocolatey uh, software. There's a VM here in the background that it's going to uh, connect into. It'll give us what appear to be errors, but those actually aren't in this case. Um, and it's gonna go and build chocolatey and then test it for us. But while it's running, we wanna continue working. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, do git work tree and we'll choose to add. And we're gonna give it, um, uh, let's call it new summit feature. And what this will do is this will uh, check if there is a branch called new summit feature that we have locally. And if there is, it will check out that branch into this new summit feature directory. And uh, if there isn't, it will create that for us, uh, but it will also uh, like do it super quick compared to a uh, git clone. So now if we do a git work tree list, again, uh, we see now that we have uh, our new summit feature, uh, which was created off of our develop branch. So they have the same, uh, the same commit here. Uh, and if we uh, change directory into those, that new, new summit feature, uh, I can create a new, new item. Uh, my, why did it stop typing? Well, there we go. Uh, my summit file, we call that. So we created a new file. We have a new, uh, untracked file, if we do a git status in this uh, directory, we see that we have my summit file is there. Uh, if we were to list uh, all of the files in this directory, uh, you'll see that we don't actually have up in the directories at the top here, we don't have a .git directory. We instead have a .git file. And this is how git work tree uh, tells it where to find uh, where to find the Git. So if we were to just uh, ask for the output of that Git, we see that uh, the Git directory is in the in that chocolatey or that choco folder, uh, and then it has its own own place under the Git work trees. Um, and then uh, if we change back to the chocolatey directory. One of, the, one of the caveats about working with uh, work trees though, is that uh, if you're used to branches, it, you're, gonna, you're gonna find that you'll try to uh, check out like you would before. Uh, and so I try to check out my new summit feature and Git's actually gonna stop me and tell me, no, you can't do that because we already have it checked out. And um, so that's, Kind of one of the things that you will run into, but uh, again, if you use uh, Git Work Tree List, it'll show you those things, Oops. as well as uh, the command I mentioned earlier, Git uh, Branch Dash VV, uh, will show you uh, all of your branches, as well as uh, it'll put in parentheses, uh, like it does here, the any that have uh, work trees, and so if I uh, we're to add a new work tree for uh, add headers, uh, which we see is one we had uh, here already. Um, 
And we see that the output of this was different. In this case, it said it was checking out uh, headers as opposed to uh, before it was, uh, if we scroll way up, what did it, what was the output for? Was, um, I think it was that it created it. Um, and now if we uh, go look at that, we see uh, add headers is a new directory there. And the, and now if we run git branch again, uh, we see that it has the, that new one, uh, as well as that it's a different commit than the develop branch uh, or really any of these other branches that I've been uh, working with today. And uh, so the, the other commands, uh, as I mentioned, is there's git work tree remove. And so if we choose to uh, remove the add headers, uh, that we just added, we'll see that Git work tree has, has no problem with that. Uh, but Git work tree isn't just, uh, it's, it's similar to Git branch when you try to delete it. If, if you haven't uh, committed all of the changes in it, it won't let you uh, delete it by default. So if I try to delete my new summit feature uh, directory, it will actually tell me that it contains files that it hasn't uh, committed into the Git repository, and so I can I, I would have to forcibly delete it. Um, and if I switch over to uh, to kind of give an example of of exactly why why I started looking into this, so we've got this this vagrant that's running and it's running tests in the background, uh, but for some of our larger uh, software, we use uh, test kitchen from chef and it, we would run a, a command. It just says kitchen and it runs through uh, to, between two and four hours of, of tests, depending on which uh, test kitchen we run. And so naturally needed to find a way to, uh, to be able to work on multiple uh, pull requests at a time, basically. And so if we come over here and we, uh, were to do a git work tree list, uh, you see that I have about 10 uh, work trees in here. And if we uh, pull up git branch, I have even more branches than I have work trees. Uh, and uh, I'm proud to say that I have lots of really good commit messages, uh, like nothing to see here. And um, and whatnot. And so um, the, the other thing about the git branch dash uh, VV, as we'll see is, it, uh, so that in this case, it's showing us that this one is gone, uh, but the, the work tree is still here and, and my local branch is still here. Uh, so if I wanted, I can do a git work tree uh, remove and which one was that feature tests. Um, and in this case, that one has untracked files. So I'm going to actually, I'm not going to forcibly delete it. I'm going to remove uh, recursive force and I'm going to just tell PowerShell to remove it. Because now, if we do a git work tree list, uh, what we'll see is that this one has been marked as prunable. And this is where uh, I mentioned that Git will eventually go through and uh, delete the reference to that work tree. But until it does that, I still can't check out uh, feature tests because Git thinks that it's uh, checked out. So I would need to run Git work tree uh, prune, uh, which is, it does almost instantly. So I honestly not sure why it doesn't do it more often, but because uh, now I can go and check out, although in this case, I can't check it out because, um, oh no, I did check it out. <laughs> it just so happens that the upstream is gone though. Uh, so if I'm going to, I'm going to switch that back to master so I don't forget. Um, and 
uh, one thing that I recently discovered. So, so I, I mean, I'm not Mike Kanakis. I'm not the, the command line ninja, but I prefer uh, spending my time at a PowerShell prompt. And uh, so I do a lot of Git commands from the prompt, but I also realize not everyone uh, is, is that way. And one thing I've recently uh, discovered is that uh, uh, Git Lens, which is a, an extension for uh, Visual Studio Code, they introduced this feature uh, called Git Lens Plus, and it allows you to uh, work with work trees. Uh, the Git Lens Plus Professional, I think, is the the tier you require. But if there, if you have public repositories, it's free. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, it's a subscription service to have access to it, and it it gives you the ability to. Uh, from it within Visual Studio Code, uh, which is I, I'm sure where most of us are doing our, or I, I hope most of us are doing our PowerShell from, uh, you're able to uh, select to create a new work tree, and it will ask you kind of which which branch or which tags you want to base your work tree off of. Uh, so I'm going to choose uh, this new feature one, and it's going to ask you where you want to store it. Uh, I'm going to go up a directory, I think, if I can, into just my regular Git directory. And I'm going to choose to uh, create a work tree in that location. And it'll ask kind of like a few questions about how you want to create it, uh, whether you want to create a new branch for it. In our case, I don't think it'll, um, oh no, actually, so we're going to choose. To, I'm going to choose to create a new branch and a work tree, uh, and it's going to ask us what the new branch name is. And I'm going to choose to create it as a new, uh, just call it new branch. And that's going to go ahead and create that new branch for us. Uh, and in particular, if I if I come back here and I do uh, get work tree list. I can see that my that new branch has been has been created there, uh, and uh, the one of the nice things about Git Worktree is that you can uh, put the Worktree anywhere on your file system. In fact, it has a lock command uh, that it, this is one of the things I was just just learned about just before. Now that uh, if you if you check it out to a uh, USB drive or um, some other type of um, of non persistent storage on your system, you can lock it so that the automated prune uh, doesn't come in and delete your your work tree. Uh, so that and it sounds sounds interesting, although although if we're honest, I'm not one hundred percent sure on on where my use case for that would be, um, other than if I check it out and want to give it to someone and then have them make changes and give it back to me. Uh, but in that case, I am I also would probably just keep it with, uh, with using Git the way that Git's designed. Uh, the other uh, nice thing about Git Lens Plus is that um, if you were, like if you're at the, at the command line and want to switch switch the work tree, use CD into that work tree, and then you you would open up code from there or, or Vim or whatever editor you happen to be using. In Git Lens, they have this icon that you can just uh, click it and it will switch your, your Visual Studio code over to that uh, repository or to that work tree for you. So you don't have to open up a new one with file open like, so you don't have to go file, open folder or anything like that. And then, um, oops, close that. Uh, and so it kind of gives you the, the, the work tree, um, that, that ability to work with work trees, as well as it gives you kind of the same view that uh, that it normally would for your your commits, uh, the same view that Git Lens does. It 
it shows you for the rest of your ah, your work trees. If I can grab the no, I'm trying to resize it, but it won't let me. Or maybe that's just as big as it'll let me get it. Um, so you can see, like, this is the my summit file that we created, um, and I don't even have to change into that particular work tree because I have the new branch checked out right now. Um, and then thinking if I have everything. Um, so we discussed the uh, using Git work tree to add a, add a work tree, uh, list your work trees and remove the work trees, as well as how to clean them up, uh, whether you're cleaning them up outside of Git or inside of Git, uh, as well as uh, using Git lens, because in here it, it does also allow you to, you can right click and either uh, open the work tree in a new folder, but you can also delete the work tree. And in the case of this new summit feature, uh, this is the one that I have a new, we have that uncommitted file on. If we try to delete it, uh, it will prompt us just like Git did. Uh, but unlike Git, we can just press a button uh, and we don't have to run it again. Although apparently we have to press it multiple times. Um, I'm going to switch back to this one so I can delete this last somewhere. This last one. And then we'll do that. And if I find PowerPoint. Um, the one thing that, uh, uh, or additional resources th that I found is that uh, there's the Git, the overall Git uh, website itself, although it can get really deep into the weeds, uh, I find that the, uh, if you, if you spend some time to understand what it's trying to say to you, then, uh, then they can actually be really helpful. As well as there's, uh, as I mentioned, there's Git Lens, which is now uh, by Git Kraken. Uh, they were purchased a few months ago, and I want to say shortly after that is when they announced the Git Lens Plus. So, and with that, were there any questions about Git Lens or um, Git in general? Um, not in particular, the, uh, so the question was if there was anything different about pull requests when using a, uh, Git work tree. So a Git work tree is, uh, effectively, uh, ju just a branch. So it would be the same as your regular, uh, your regular pull request workflow where you would be, you would do the work on the branch itself, uh, and you're able to. Uh, commit on in that work tree directory instead of you don't have to switch back to the main uh, Git, Git directory or anything like that. So just put uh, this one back up. No, that didn't work the way I wanted. Um, put this slide back up for a minute just to uh, re go over again that the, the kind of five uh, main commands. Uh, it was four when I was first doing this and about three times through until I realized that I wrote the word five at the top and only put four lists on. So uh, <laughs> um, those are the get work tree, add, uh, work tree list and work tree remove are kind of the main work tree ones. And then uh, work tree or not work tree, get branch dash VV to list everything out uh, in, uh, in a, like plenty of detail and uh, finally get work tree prune uh, will handle if you delete any of uh, the files uh, outside of 
uh, running git commands to uh, clean up. Like, so if you delete the work tree, then prune will uh, handle that for you. Uh, I can, uh, as far as how to, how to contact me outside of here, I'm on uh, Twitter as Corey Knox. I'm on GitHub and GitLab as CoreBob. I'm also on the PowerShell uh, Slack and Discord server. I want to say it's either CoreBob or Corey on both of those servers. Uh, Discord is definitely where I would be easier to contact than the uh, community Slack server. I also have a website at coreynox.dev where I blog regularly for large values of regularly, uh, usually approaching two to three years, but it is there. So and that is all I have for that. So stop sharing my screen. Um, there is also, I, I had stickers because I was going to be there in person at Chocolatey and an awkward monkey one. Uh, I also ordered uh, stickers and shipped them to uh, CV Coaster because uh, apparently I can order shit stickers and get them quicker than I can get a passport because my passport will either, I'm sure, show up today or tomorrow or whatnot, which unfortunately isn't early enough for me to be there in person. All right. Thank you.